right, this is the routine right here because I can't think of anything else to do. This is a uh, Roger. We have the 15th of August 2020, and uh, this is part number 11 from 55 Nomad build. So the Ellis is in, it cranked up on the last video, number 10, and uh, since then I'll go over a list of stuff I've accomplished so far. Uh, I'll just crank up with a quick overview. Uh, thing actually looked pretty good. I got the stance the way I wanted to. Um, and what I have done is I've taken this car and driven it out here, turned it around, and then backed it back in here. So that's a different direction. And uh, it's actually looking pretty decent right now. So uh, I guess I'll start off with the inner fender wells. Some stuff's on my list. This is all just dust right here. But if you look, this is pretty shiny right up in here because this is 2K paint. And what I dealt with here was literally probably 50, 60 years of undercoating and that really, really tough crap that they put on. And the only way I got it off, because you can't sandblast that stuff off, is I actually got it off by just putting it in a wheelbarrow. I went out to the middle of the field out there and burned the stuff off of there, literally with a big giant torch, and uh, then cleaned it up, sanded it a little bit, uh, primered it, and then I shot the 2K on it, so it actually turned out pretty good. So what I'd like to do now is just go through the list. Uh, you guys have seen the routine, you know what the list looks like. I'm going to go down right here and take this off right here. It cut panels and upholster cover. I've actually done that. I'll show you that in a second. This list right here, the original list is actually kind of done right now. Uh, except for like things like the glass sunroof, which is something I can put a little bit later on. And the trailer hitch. I'm going to put that on a little bit later on too, but here's a new smaller list right here. But what I can do is uh, the motor ECU, I can color that red, the transmission ECU, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you how to do that real quick or how I put that in there. I actually mounted it with Velcro this time. That sounds kind of uh, hillbilly, but since I'm from North Carolina, that's allowed. I got my light pre-positioned down here. I just want to show you, this is actually what, what I call clean. This is my definition of clean. But I got my carpet in here, and here's where I put my easy wiring mount right there. So it's accessible, I can move them around a little bit. And I went ahead and mounted, right here is my OBT2 link tool that actually connects to the tablet. And you know, when I, when I did all my crimps, I actually crimp them and then I solder them and I put heat shrink on them. So, there's actually the GM uh, fuse block, and you probably can't see this, but I'm gonna make my best attempt here, is way up in here is where the actual ECU controller is, and right behind that is the one for the transmission. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but I did my best effort. And then this is obviously the pedal mount, ECU mounted, and so forth. So the interior is what I consider almost done. I got a couple of wires still have to run, but the light switch is in, all the, uh, the switches here are in, and I'm gonna try to go up here. The cigarette lighter is in and, and hooked up, and if you open up right here, all this is actually done, and you can see right here, I actually extended my uh, glove compartment cover and I put the cigarette holder, which was right here, the cigarette ashtray, and I welded on here, then I painted the thing. So, looks pretty decent. And you've seen in the other videos how my tablet actually comes out right here. And then uh, I got my chrome in here, and that little piece I'm showing you right there, I actually lost it, I admit it, I lost it. Didn't take it to the chrome shop. But uh, the fine folks at Triple Nickel Chevrolet actually sent it to me, I think it was like $9, and about $11 in shipping. So I'll assemble the rest of this, and I'll go ahead and cut the light off down here, but I consider this basically done down here. So come back out here. Uh, the door panels are done. I think you might have seen those in previous videos. And the back here is actually done as well too. You've seen some of those in the videos too, but what I'm gonna try to do here is this is kind of heavy. Okay, lift that up. And my amplifiers for the 12 speaker stereo system are actually mounted right down here. I always use Mac audio and there's a whole bunch of little detail stories about here. These boxes you see right here are actually welded in and that allows for this for the exhaust system to go over top of the rear of the frame and then do a side exit. And then another thing right here is these pieces right here are actually from the local Home Depot Bauhaus if you will 
because the ones on the front actually have a little piece right down here that extends. But I found it when I flip it over, it got dangerously close to the plus terminal down here. So by eliminating that, I can make sure I don't short that out. But anyway, you can flip this down and it goes down. And then the back is actually pretty good. And I'll show you some of the rest of the stuff. What you see on here, the blue paint is actually a, a Bauhaus paint, which is a Home Depot. And uh, I just decided right now, since I got a good base coat, this was an epoxy 2K paint on the bottom, but you know, it had a whole bunch of little dings and scratches on it and everything. So I went ahead and spray canned this stuff right here but with this kind of like it's a matte satin finish. And that's what we're gonna look like. And I'll do a quick little shot around the front, but before I do that, there's the actual paint. They're about $6 a can, so they're kind of pricey, but they do a good job and they cover it up. And eventually I might paint this thing black as the original plan. The front bumper right here is actually moved in a solid one and a half inches in. The way you do that is a California bump here. All you do is just drill new holes in it and you just push it in a little bit. That's all I did. I got a new grill on here and the only wiring I have left to do is for the front uh, signal lights and for the front headlights. But this is already run. I just got to run it to the left and right. And everything here turned out pretty good. Nice and shiny right here. Flat black, I like the contrast, and I'm gonna have two fans I got coming from some racing. Two 12 inch ones are gonna sit right here. One's gonna sit right here, those will be pusher fans. And I got my giant spal fan right back here, but I think it's about 19 inches, and that is gonna be my primary air mover in here. So this is basically done. Engine runs, you saw in that last video. But let me cruise over here and uh, go down the rest of the list in case I forgot something. So, let's see. Uh, let's see what we got hood mounts good to go haven't done that yet but I do have the grill in I've got the fenders in and I've got the bumpers in and I've bled the brakes rear end oil I checked that in the last video and QTB electric cutouts I've actually got those wired up I can actually show you that it's pretty cool because it's nice and loud or you can drive the road comfortably quiet uh, rear taillight install or tailgate install I've got that, and let me show you that real quick. And I come right over here, and if you open this up right here, actually everything is pretty good. These lines right down here are in here, and the same thing with this right here. So these are the old ones, and that's the new one down here. And somebody posted in the last video that the reason those bumperettes are down here, or the reason it won't go flat, is because you're almost touching right here. So again, I got my new bumper on the back, same thing with this one right here. This one's actually moved in a solid inch. And then I've got my tailgates, all my lights are working, everything, I already checked that out. So there's the plan. And I can actually close this up, this opens up. And then again, the spray can thing is something I've done for a long, long time. And let me just show you something cool right here. And this is what takes so much time, is this is actually the original door jam or bear claw or claw, what you want to call it. But this top one right here was basically stripped out after many, many years. So I got a different bolt in here. This is actually metric. It's metric on the bottom. That actually looks pretty cool right here. That I can live with. But it was basically moving back and forth. And then I had to put this little rubber plug on here right here to stop the door. So when now when you slam it, it actually does pretty good. It actually closes up and it locks itself down. So what I like to do now is I'll cruise over here and show you guys down the list. Let's see, check engine trans oil. I've done that. And then I'm gonna flip over because I think that list is actually complete except for the hood, which is no big deal. Horn mounts, I've got those in there. Mount ECUs and trans, I've got that already done. I think I showed you that. Hopefully it showed up in the video. Rear USB 12 volt charge. Oh man, that's something I can show you real quick. That actually turned out pretty cool. So for that, gotta reopen up this right here. And then if you open this right here, and you come right down here, that's where I told you how it's gonna do this thing. You plug that on, and you've got power. It gives you 12.4 volts. And then here you've got USB chargers, and you also have for like a cool or something you can plug in here. That's a regular old cigarette charger. And so I've got that in there. And then as you guys saw, that is actually my rear storage compartment. 
And then right in front of that is my huge 80 liter gas tank, which I think equates down to about 23, 24 gallons. And then those are my new retractable seat belts. And then I went ahead and got this from Vintage AC. And as you can see right here, I already have my actuators on here. That basically converts an analog signal into a digital signal to go to the computer. So I've got, I think it's the Gen 4 air conditioning unit and it's already mounted. And uh, I'll shoot around to the front real quick here and show you where everything comes out. Just haven't done everything right now. So there, this is gonna be uh, high pressure, low pressure. And the yellow ones right here are actually just hot and cold water. And that's got it basically running from right here where I've got them blocked off right now. It's got a little loop right in here so I can run the engine and drive it. Uh, okay, Cruz, I'll come over here now. And so what have we got here? Door trim. I've actually got that right now. And I'll show you a little trick I use on that later. So the charger is in. Buyers a support bracket, I did that already. Fuel line power, did that. All LS3 connections are done, otherwise the doggone thing wouldn't run. AC control conversion, I just showed you guys that a couple of seconds ago, that analog to digital conversion. The wiper switch, eh, yeah, I guess I can consider that done right now. I'll show you that in a second. And wiper dash final. And well, the antenna hole shut, I've actually done that already and I'll show you that in a second. So real quick, to the, the wiper conversion, this was an eBay unit that I bought. And what I did is since I don't have my wiper here or here anymore, if you can see that or not, I have my wiper control right here on the steering column. So all this works right now. The only thing I couldn't get to work is the intermediate, intermediate gear. So not a big deal, I, can got, I got high, low, and park, and everything works. So my wiper motor is installed. And then as far as welding, whole, uh, welding closed, the uh, antenna mount, I did that right over here. There's where it used to be, and you can't see it anymore. Basically, I just welded it shut, a couple of swipes of fine, fine Bondo on there, and that's it. This looks like overspray, but it's not. It's just dirty and dusty right now. And then I've got my little shim mounts underneath here, which basically dictate how smooth this is going to be. But again, this is like, kind of like a turquoise color. And uh, I'm going to just, I sand this down at leisure, tape it off, and again, spray can it with my, what's it called, Next Generation. And the color is called Minsk Blue. Yeah, Minsk Blue Satin Matte. So pretty good color. And again, it kind of like matches the car. Eventually, I want to do this whole thing in black, but we'll see. All right, hey, so that's it for the actual video number 11. But I do want to show you this because this is cool show and tell stuff. And I actually failed kindergarten one time in 1971 or 72. Uh, and because uh, I was always a big show and tell guy. I used to bring crap to school all the time. And in Munich, Germany, I went to the defense department schools. But anyway. This is the second 914 that I've purchased. And this is going to be, this is from Kennedy Engineering Products. This is uh, going to be the LS3 2 Boxster S 6 speed transmission. And there's a company called Renegade Hybrids. They build really, really cool stuff. And all this shipment just came in through the, uh, the APO box. So this is an LS mount. This is the actual block off plate for where the used to be the LS uh, water pump goes so you have to get space open. and this right here is the rear transmission mount and I'll show you that in a couple of seconds so this right here is going to get an LS3 just like that car has in it and I'm going to bolt the whole thing together I, I got this thing for fairly cheap from a buddy of mine he's got, actually got 31 of them so I consider him a hoarder but he started converting over to 911s. And then you guys have seen this right here. This is the, uh, the 914 that I got from a buddy of mine in Tennessee. And the uh, only thing I'm doing is just tweaking a couple of things on it, but engine looks good. And that's where I got the idea here for that one right here. This one's probably running about 160 horsepower, which is crazy fast. And um, I'm gonna put an LS3. I just haven't decided whether it's gonna be the 430 horsepower model or the 480. Probably the 430, which just makes sense. But anyway, 
The stance on this thing, I love it. Uh, it's driving, it's braking. I moved it back and forth, and in the tail end of this video, uh, I plan on actually getting in it and driving it. So hopefully I haven't been uh, talking too long, and uh, that's about it. Well, this is almost complete. Um, chrome parts came back from the chromer, and uh, I had to take a couple of deep swallows because this stuff in Germany is crazy expensive to have actually chrome. Very expensive, but they put it in these nice little bags when it comes back. Um, my definition of crazy expensive is for all eight pieces, probably about $750, which I know is a boatload of money. But what are you going to do? you got to actually have it in there. And then mixed in there is a couple of Danchuk's pieces, which are the, uh, the, crimp, the, the, the headlight bezels or chrome rings. And those are actually a lot cheaper. I, I, I'm not saying they were made in China or Mexico or whatever, but to have something original re chrome because these pieces right here are not re-popped right now, so you have no choice. Uh, that's basically it. Car's looking pretty decent, and like I said, on the tail end of this, I think I can actually do a first drive video for you. So that's it. Um, take care from Germany. This is a 55 Nomad build, part number 11. Bye-bye.